The Half OK Dungeons and Dragons podcast is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. We done warned ya. Dwarf women can be an acquired taste for some. <laughs> <laughs> but I am always enjoyed. I'm Troy. I play Gary, the half orc cleric. Hi. Hi, I'm Danielle, and I play Horton Scorybeer, a dwarf a warlock. Most of the time, sometimes she's someone else. Hi, my name is Sammy, and my character is the unintentionally pyromaniac halfling arcane trickster Vermin. Hi, I'm Shay, and I play Yulali Dulali, the sexy half elf whose accent changes like eight episodes into it or something like that. Hi, this is Mora, and I play Eliwick, a gnome bard. Hi, my name is Michael. I play Danikin, who is the Pally, who is the what little conscious we have of our party. And my name is Eric. I'm the Dungeon Master for Half OK. And I am your host, Lauren, and I play Father Ralph, a human monk from a sex cult. Thank you for joining us for Half OK Dungeons and Dragons for Perverts. We call ourselves Half OK because in addition to being a little cuckoo, half of us used to work together at a library in Oakmas, a.k.a. The OK. This is a bonus episode, a short slash story between Father Ralph and Hortense Glorybeard, and it takes place between episode 13 and 14. Enjoy! Mm-hmm. This is half okay after dark <laughs> because we're so PG mm-hmm. during the day. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, Eric. It's a yeah. lot of reading. It's okay. No, I'm excited to read it. <laughs> it'll it'll kick off his uh, oh, career oh, in um, audiobook reading. You ready, Sammy? <laughs> it's gonna be I'm so awkward. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. You guys should just look at each other the whole time. We <laughs> just. Salad eye <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. This is All My Voices Have Agreed <laughs> Why Not by Warren Lark. The dwarf Hortense Glory Beer, whore whore to her friends, was in an uncomfortable state between sobriety and drunkenness, sleepiness and alacrity. The drunkenness kept the voices away, but the hangovers were a bitch. Plus, There would assuredly be killing tomorrow, and she would need her strength. She had fallen in with a gang of weirdo perverts. Relationships were not her forte, but breaking out of prison together has a way of throwing people together. So far, the supply of mead had been decent. They had found a commune of some tongueless monks living in the middle of the woods. That was fortuitously pleasant, because the voices in her head never shut up. Except when she was drunk, of course. The monks also had booze, which was also fortuitous. But now it was late, and most everyone had gone to bed, and her buzz had all but worn off. It was time to find more mead. Sleep was too far away. Dawn was too close. She scanned the little village for signs of life. Someone who could point her to where they kept more mead, or that weird cantaloupe hooch that made her black out for a few blissful hours crickets. All she heard was crickets, or whatever bug was sentenced to hell to make cricket-like noises. Near the center of the village was a faint glow. It was the last remnants of a cook fire. A large, robed, humanoid figure silhouetted in front of the flames. Hmm. Well, that's the most promising thing out here, she said and wandered over. As she approached, she realized that the figure was Father Ralph, a human and one of the prisoners she had escaped with. He was staring pensively into the flames, gently poking the coals with a large stick. Hello, Hortense, he said impassively in his deep basso voice, his deep blue eyes remaining on the flames. (laughs) Troy's going to do a spit (laughs) take. Hortense got straight to the point. Got any mead? she asked. Father Ralph shifted to look at her. Chasing those demons away still. Demons? What? Where? (laughs) Father Ralph touched her gently on the arm to still her. No, your inner demons. Oh yeah, those! (laughs) There are things you can do besides drinking to bring peace. Sure, but I I like drinking. Well... If you don't have any need, I'll be on my way. I'm going to start waking up monks until I find one that has some booze. (laughs) Father Ralph turned away and threw another log on the fire. 
and Hortense had begun to walk away when he spoke to her. Hortense. <laughs> the subtle ring of sadness and the vulnerability in his voice stopped her. More out of curiosity than anything else, she had witnessed Father Ralph's strong and capable fighting. His unique style. <laughs> unique. <laughs> she had seen the warrior side of him. She had overheard someone say something about him being a monk from a, a sex cult. Or was that one of her voices? <laughs> well, it was pretty obvious, even to some of her most more innocent voices, that Father Ralph was overtly sexual and had voracious appetites down to the clothes he wore. Even the rippling folds of his mauve-colored robe had a vaginal appearance to them. <laughs> but in the short time they had known each other, his vulnerability was new to her, and that stopped her and made her wonder, what else did he have to offer? <laughs> what else indeed? <laughs> did, did you find some mead? She asked hopefully. Have you heard about why I was excommunicated from my religion? About how I grew lost and got sent to hell? No, Hortense said, hoping the story would somehow lead to more alcohol. <laughs> you see, my religion, that sex cult thing you used to belong to? Father Ralph blinked. Yes, the sex cult. Well, they trained us since we were children. Muscle control, pressure points, concentration, and meditation. Languages and oration. Courtly manners, diplomacy, dancing, fighting, <clears throat> weaponry. Different ways to restrain yourself, to restrain others ways to cause pain, and ways to cause pleasure. <laughs> oh, did they teach you how to make moonshine? <laughs> they taught us other ways to distract besides using alcohol. Like drugs? Drugs? <laughs> he slowly leaned towards her and whispered into her ear, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> that tickles. Hortense giggled. May I see your hand? He asked. She held her large hand to him, her knuckles scarred and rough from the many fights she had been in throughout her life. He turned it over in his lap and stroked her palm with his fingertips. There was someone very special to me once, but our love was forbidden. We plotted to run away together, but we got separated and I am still looking for her. You see, in our religion, monogamy is forbidden, especially between elves and humans. Elves can be very racist, you know. I don't, I don't know. I made a, I made a pinky promise to the lolly, and she seems pretty cool. <laughs> True. There are many good elves that aren't that way. But the ones who were in charge, when they found out about us, they had to ensure that they made an example of us. That's why I just murder people like that. <laughs> Accurate. Father Ralph's gaze grew distant. His lips pursed as he took in her response. Something getting decided within him. He sighed and turned back to her. Perhaps we are cursed for who we are. For what we have done, perhaps we deserve to be here in hell. I mean, probably. <laughs> she shrugged. I did kill all those dwarves at my cousin's bar mitzvah. People refer to it as the blood mitzvah now. He clasped her hand between both of his. I don't know, whore whore. How can loving someone be a sin? <laughs> If it was a minor or your cousin, well, I mean, it de depending on where you live, it's it's complicated. That's why I like mead. It's nice and simple. You drink it, and the voices go away. I need something to make my mind go quiet, whore whore. 
and booze won't do it. And I think I can help you make your mind go quiet, too, if you will give me the chance. You do? Come with me, he said, <laughs> quietly taking her hand. Okie dokie. <laughs> Father Ralph took her gently by the hand, slowing his steps so the small dwarf could keep up with his long strides. He looked at her, and the corners of his lips turned up in a small smile. They found it private place on a patch of long grass on top of a small rise. In the distance, the sky gleamed red with hellish fire. Father Ralph spread his velvety vagina robe, <laughs> hair side down onto the ground, and invited her to sit. He brushed her hair behind her ear and gazed into her eyes, searching. Oh, it's kind of warm and moist, <laughs> Hortense said, fluffing up the robe underneath her to make a comfy nest. Tell me, Hortense, have you loved before? He asked huskily. Oh, sure, lots of times. Loved or loved? Have you felt pain Losing someone so close to you, it's like your soul has been ripped out of your chest, and all you are left with is a giant hole in your life. I lost my favorite axe once, <laughs> but I found it again once I sobered up. <clears throat> Will you help me forget? I, I don't think I have any more of that moonshine. No. No, I don't need that. I need something else. <laughs> Can I kiss you? Sure, I mean, you are pretty handsome for a human, and there isn't moss growing on your teeth, so I, that's a bonus. <laughs> Father Ralph cupped her chin, <laughs> gently lifting her face to his and softly pressed his lips against hers. There was a moment of contact before he tested moving his lips against hers. Is that okay? He breathed. Ah, oh, that was fine. No tongue yet, though. Uh huh? Patience, my bad. Given, he leaned in again, pressing his lips more firmly against hers, moving them with increasing fervor, teasing her before opening his mouth. And even then, he didn't give her his tongue. He teased her until her tongue reached out, seeking his. <laughs> and then he penetrated her mouth. Tasting a soft moan of delight escaped from her throat. His hands caressed her shoulders and gripped in her hair as he explored her mouth with his lips and tongue. Overcome with desire, Hortense took up the initiative and pushed Father Ralph onto his back. His eyes widened in surprise as Hortense climbed on top and began lifting his tunic as she plundered his mouth with her tongue. <laughs> Suddenly, Hortense grew up short, startled. Well, why are you so lumpy? <laughs> Father Ralph perked a wolfish smile. Those, my dear, are called abs. <laughs> <laughs> There's like eight of them. She exclaimed, running her hands over his ripped stomach. Well, half starving in prison helps in the getting cut department, he chuckled. Plus, I practice my katas every day to stay in shape. Entranced, Hortense placed kisses on each of his eight pack, giving his sides gentle nibbles. She ran her sure hands over face. him. Stopping to grip his expanding bulge. <laughs> you don't have to be quiet. You can be loud. That's why I wanted you all here while I recited this. Okay. So you can laugh and. A rumbling laugh escaped his lips. How <laughs> tickles he chastised. Fine, she said, yanking his tunic off over his head with enough aggression to part his lips and widen his eyes. 
She pushed him back onto the ground, running her hands through his chest hair. You're a lot less hairy than a dwarf, she exclaimed. <laughs> I can even see your nipples. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> He caught her hand before she could poke him in the chest <clears throat> and gently bit her finger, making a low, playful, growling sound. <laughs> he gently flipped her onto her back, taking over the top position, pinning her hands above her head as he ground his pelvis against hers. <laughs> you are quite a naughty dwarf. Aren't you? <laughs> the most. That's for sure. <laughs> Kiss me. He released her hands, freeing her to caress his perfectly muscled body as he slowly peeled off her dress. He then positioned himself between her legs, fondling and caressing her bare breasts. He lowered himself onto her to suck. Her breasts, and she found herself moaning and grinding against him with desire. He held still, focusing on her breasts as she writhed underneath him, tormented with her need for more. Her hands gripped in his thick hair as she pushed him lower. Eagerly, he kissed and tasted her, lapping at her core. <laughs> <clears throat> he hummed. He's really desperate. <laughs> Dwarf women can be an acquired taste for some. <laughs> but I have always enjoyed it. He said, tipping into her for more. Of course he did. <laughs> Tasting and teasing, pleasing and coaxing, rubbing, <laughs> lapping and swirling against into her with tongue and fingers until she crusted the hill and came hard. What? He quickly backed off, tasted the hill, then increased, bringing her back over the hill again. He would have kept going, she realized, only she told him to stop. And she could have kept going too, except that she needed him, more of him, now. Gripping him again by the hair, she dragged him up to her lips, kissing him hard as she deftly loosened his pants. But then she suddenly stopped short. I don't suppose by any chance you're Jewish. <laughs> he carefully observed her expression, biting his lower lip, understanding. I'm afraid not. Does it bother you much that I am uncircumcised? No, whatever. It's dark anyways. <laughs> <laughs> After a few test yanks, she sniffed him. Test yanks. And then gave him a quick taste test before going to town. Kind of weird, but you get used to it after a while, she shrugged. Then he was on top of her, their naked bodies pressed together. Kissing, grinding, and feeling, they both felt so ready, in tune, and so focused on nothing but each other and their need. He kissed her, then asked a little breathlessly, Or oh, may I have sex with you? Potence paused considering, consulting with her voices. Oh, my voices, he said. Why not? <laughs> he kissed her deeply and slowly plunged into her. Plunged, of course. <laughs> Poor horror, he murmured into her ear as she trailed kisses down his neck. That was now that... So I didn't get to finish it, but in the end, after they finish having sex and poor horror comes like ten more times, <laughs> she's like, you know, that was all right, but I think I'll stick with me. Like, let's not tell that's anybody else okay. about this. And he's like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little gamey. A little gamey. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you for joining us for Half OK Dungeons and Dragons, the bonus episode titled All of My Voices Have Agreed Why Not. We hope you don't find us as disappointing as our parents do. If you need to reach us, you can always find us at Half OK DND at gmail.com. That's A L F O K D A N D D at gmail.com. Don't forget the double dose of the D. Oh, yeah. You can like us on Facebook under Half OK D and D. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you day could use more robot screaming sounds as my mom calls my music, you can find it on SoundCloud under Half OK D and D. Share us with all your cool friends. New Half OK episodes out every other week. Peace. Does it bother you much that I am uncircumcised? No, whatever. It's dark, anyways. <laughs>